We've introduced this idea of Pascal's triangle and its mysterious connection to binomials. Can someone remind me what's a binomial? Two terms. It's two terms. It's an expression and there's like an A and a B or an X and a one on X or uh, really any algebraic things you want to put together. It's a binomial, but we're not just having an A and a B. What do we do to that object? We raise it to some power, whatever power you want, right? So long as those powers are integers, positive integers, we notice this weird, weird pattern based on the sky. And if you haven't yet this lesson, you should get it back out, okay, because we're going to be using it again. So we notice this is strange, but we want to be able to talk about this phenomenon in a, in a sensible way. Is everything clear? Oh, yes. Sorry to hear about that. Okay, now hopefully it jogs a bit of your memory that I introduced this notation because when you have notation you can talk about things quickly, right? Um, you can talk about, well, I want a particular number in here and I can specify very precisely which one it is. So when you see something like this, NCR, or even though there are no C's in this, I literally read that as NCR. When you see that, what does it mean? What does the N refer to? The N refers to, on Pascal's triangle, which row am I on, right? So for example, if I wanted to talk about a number here, a number here, what row is this that I'm putting my hand on right now? That's the third row, remembering that there is a zeroth row up there. And then it goes first row, second row, third row. So conveniently, if you can't remember what's what, you just look at that second number along there. Or should I say the first number? So that's the third row. So if I said 3C something, I know I'm in this row. So what does the R mean? Yes. Fantastic. So it's like, which of these coefficients do you want? Which number along? And just like the entirety of Pascal's triangle, which starts from the zeroth row. Each row of Pascal's triangle starts with the zeroth term, right? So for example, 3C0 would be this one here. The number that I circled, of course, would be 3C1, okay? And I can go 3C2, 3C3, and that's the whole row. So having this notation here, what I want us to know is that when you understand these numbers, there's some properties that come from Pascal's triangle and what happens in a um, in an actual binary and speech. Okay, so let's begin by saying, uh, and if you want, you can have a little sub in here underneath this reminder. Properties, regardless of what row you are in, regardless of what row you are in, the zeroth term is always the same, right? The zeroth term is this one going along the left here, right? Do you agree? So the zero term in any row is one. And in the same way, in the nth row, the nth term is also always the same thing, namely one, right? Remember, this is zero, first, second, third. So the third row in the third term is one, okay? So how am I going to state that using this notation? What would I write? How can I talk about, how would I describe the zeroth term in any row? Which of these is the um, letter, number that describes the term again? It's the R, isn't it? That's the term. Which term is it? And this guy is the row. Okay. So I can say any row. So I'm going to say N, C, you know, that can literally be anything I want. The zero term is NC0. That's the zero term along the row. What about the last term? The last term is going to be NCN. NCN, fantastic. NCN. They're both equal because they are both always equal to 1. So this is our first property, which means that if you go to your calculator and you say 15C15, you'll get 1. Uh, 100C100, you'll get 1 every single time. Or anything C0. So that's the first thing I want to do. The second thing is, each row is symmetrical. Do you notice that? Like the 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So pause for a minute and think. How would you describe the symmetry of Pascal's triangle, the symmetry of these coefficients? How would you do it in this kind of notation? Suggestion? Maybe you could be wrong. Nc equals nc nz. Okay, so 
Firstly, NC means, you know what? What I'm about to say applies to any row. Alright, does that make sense? That means I can put in any number here. Now I could say X, to be honest, I can say any pretty more one. However, by convention, for some reason, <laughs> we use R's for these. Okay, I think partly because um, often the binomial you're expanding, it has X's in it. So let's let's avoid using X again. So NCR, this could be any term in the row, right? It's going to be equal to some other term in the same row. Do you agree with that? So if I'm in the same row, that's the nth row, right? Okay, now let's have a look at an example. I can actually rewrite Pascal's triangle, the whole thing, using this NCR notation. Okay. So for instance, if I were to replace this row here, instead of writing 146.1, I could write, what's the first term in NCR notation? What row am I on? Fourth row. And which term is it? It's the zero term, right? There's the first one, which of course is one. The next term will be 4C1, and then 4C2, and then I've got the whole row once I get to NCM, which in this case is 4C4. Okay, so look at the symmetry, right? For starters, we've already noticed this symmetry. We noticed that, that was the first thing, they're always equal to one. Then you've got this symmetry, and then by the time you get to there, you're already at the middle, okay? So, which term is equal to the rth term? I think it's going to be n minus r, isn't it? I think we were talking x's before, right? But think about how this works. Uh, 4c2, uh, 4c1 rather, 4c1. 4c1 is equal to 4c, what's n in this case? 4 minus 1. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Uh, in fact, even when you get to the middle term, which doesn't seem to have a partner, you get 4c2 equals 4c4 4 minus 2. Well, that's 2, isn't it? Okay, do, does that make sense? Okay, so this is a way of stating the symmetry for this case, but this is far more general. Okay, so far so. All right, property 1, property 2. I've got 4 for you, so we're halfway there. The third property is, do you remember, when I asked you to add up all of the coefficients in any individual row, do you remember the sums of each of the binomial coefficient rows? Had a weird pattern. What was that pattern? They were powers of two. Do you remember that? Just add them up quickly. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, etc. Okay. So how could I state that property in NCR notation? Hmm. Now I'm going to do this two ways for you. Okay. Firstly, I'm just going to do it the long way. The only way really that we know how. But you will see quite quickly, the notation I'm going to show you is a bit cumbersome. So I'm going to introduce, even though I just introduced some new notation, I'm going to introduce some new new notation, which will help us say this in a more succinct way. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm trying to say add up all the terms. Add up all the terms. And I mean add up all the terms on any row. Okay. So therefore, the first thing I'm going to say is n c something. Because this property I'm about to give applies to all the rows, so you have to be able to say n, c, whatever, so that I can put any number I like in n. What's the first term? It's n, c, 0, right? And then the next one is n, c, 1. What's the next one? n, c, 2. Okay, now hold on a second. How many elements, items, terms will there be in this row? And the answer is, um, I'm going to get up to the nth term, just be careful. If I counted them from 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 eventually I'm going to get to m plus 1. Do you agree with that? Have a look at the fourth row. You see it's got five terms? Yeah. It's a bit weird. There are five terms. The last term is the fourth term. It's because we start from 0, right? Okay, so therefore, I'm not just going to do this forever. I don't actually know how many there will be because I haven't chosen n. So I'm just going to say plus dot dot dot. And then the last term I know will be NCN. Does that make sense? So what were we saying it was equal to when you add up everything in a row? Powers of 2. It's 2 to the power of something. Question, what something? It's going to be n. That's convenient, isn't it? This is one of the reasons we start counting from zero. It gives us this nice way to articulate everything. Here's the fourth row. 
it adds to 16. 16 is 2 to the 4, fourth row. So far, so good. Okay, um, <clears throat> this is not exhaustive, but for now, I'm going to give you one last little property, which is Pascal's triangle. How do you make how do you make Pascal's triangle again? How do you find out that the next row is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1? What am I calculating to do that? Yeah. Yeah, so you look at the row above, you take two adjacent numbers and you add them, 3 and 1, to give you 4. Agreed? Okay, now think. I'm going to pause for a minute and let you have a go at this before I show you. I'm going to ask the same question one more time. How would you take that property and write it in this notation? This is how we talk about the ends of the rows being one, the symmetry of each row, the fact that every row adds up to two to the power of whatever row you're on. Take a few minutes, because this is actually kind of tricky, and I want you to think about how you would write this, this orange thing that's happening, with this. Can you have a go? I'll give you some time. If you think you have something, call me over. 